Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to share with you my final thoughts on the Old Town Autopilot 120 Sportsman Series fishing kayak. Oh yeah. This is my kayak. Get yourself one. Fish on. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Look at that tank. That's a toad, brother. Golly. All right, guys, so before we jump into my thoughts on this boat, one of the coolest things about this is the integrated way that you've got this grip that just pulls the motor in place. As soon as you lock it in, it turns on, it finds the remote, and you're ready to go fishing. And if you need to kick it up to get to grass or fishing line or anything like that that may become entangled on the motor, or if you just need to get into shallow water, you just pull the handle and it pops right back up. So I've not always been a fan of a motor in the front of the boat, uh, especially in the bow because when you run into stuff there's nowhere for that motor to go but these boats have a kick up feature into the motor uh, it's actually better supported by the boat because it's not all the way out at the front so if you're going through wave action or if you get into rough water uh, the boat is designed to support the weight of the motor so having it a little bit further back in the boat uh, is a little bit more beneficial now a bow mounted motor does have a lot more control but because of the fact that Old Town equipped this boat uh, with an oversized rudder, you don't have to worry about the, the boat, the tail end wanting to squirrel around and fishtail on you. You actually have the ability to still control with your feet. And so the one-two punch of having that oversized rudder, foot control, and once you get the motor set, you almost don't have to make adjustments. Uh, so yet again, a big reason why I'm a fan uh, of this setup. I also like the open cockpit, the little storage cubbies on the side. But let me just start from the beginning and kind of walk you through my favorite things uh, about this boat. If you guys haven't done so yet, be sure to watch my video on selecting a fishing kayak. I'll link that up in the description box below and you'll understand some of the topics that I'm talking about. Stability, uh, comfort, rigging, ability, reliability, affordability, performance, and everything else or what I call the SCRAPE acronym. So before you scrape your money together to buy a fishing kayak, be sure to consider those factors. So as I go through this boat, I'm gonna start with stability left nothing to be desired. In fact, I think that the seat height, uh, the deck being a little bit lower, everything about the way that this boat is designed. Uh, I talked about the hull in the initial walkthrough video. I'll also link that up in the description box below, so we're not going to flip it over and go back through that again. But from a stability standpoint, nothing to be desired. If I was rating it one to five, this thing would literally be a five. Okay, you will never have to worry about stability with this boat. Um, so yeah, stability, comfort. This seat is comfortable. In fact, a lot of kayak seats on the market are comfortable, but I always recommend throwing a kayak cushion on there for a little bit, you know, a little extra six, eight hours a day uh, of sitting comfort. Uh, other than that, there's very few modifications that I've made to this boat, as you'll see as I go through it. So I love this boat. The seat is super comfortable. I like the fact that it's a little bit wider for us bigger dudes. Um, and I'll still add the kayak cushion to it because I've just kind of become spoiled. And this kayak cushion is one of those must have things for me now. So even though the seat is super comfortable, I love the fact that I just throw a kayak cushion on there and take it to that next level. And I actually like that little bit of extra, you know, height too, just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, again, rigability, reliability. I have had zero issues with this boat. Uh, I will talk about one reliability issue in the pros and cons at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. I personally have not had any of those issues, but I will talk about one issue that I've seen on forums uh, and actually talked to an angler at a boat ramp who brought that to my attention. But again, stay tuned to the end of the video for that. Um, affordability is the next deal. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up and talk about rigability a little bit. To be honest with you, the best thing about this boat is you don't have to rig it. From the tracks that are included to these forward-facing rod holders that I really didn't think I would like, but once I realized that they act like a third hand, uh, and I've also saw a couple of anglers that use the bent shaft, you know, rods to troll with those forward rod holders. Um, I like them. Like, actually, I really like them. I'm a bigger fan of these forward facing rod holders than I thought I would be. Uh, the big oversized drink holders behind it are great. They do have a tendency to fill up with water. So my advice would be like leave a water bottle in there or when you first get in the boat, push that water bottle in there and it'll force that water to come out. You know, one thing that Old Town maybe consider in the future is putting like a little slot there so that that water, you know, could drain out similar to these slots that they already have, you know, in the pockets on the inside of the boat. Um, so it'd be a real easy adjustment. But again, rigability, the only major changes, uh, the only minor changes, I guess I should say, is that I did put a double header from Yak Attack on there because I do like to keep my paddle nice and handy. 
uh, I put a black pack in the back of it. And once I put the black pack pro, I had a couple of rod holders on there. And then I realized I don't even need those rod holders with the four flush mounts, the Yak Attack black pack pro, you've pretty much got all the rod storage you need. And there's not much more that you need to do to this boat. They already come with the tracks. They already come with pretty much everything you need. In fact, they, they send you this tackle box when you get the boat that's got all the accessories that you need in it and it's also got some spare parts really big um uh shout out to the folks at old town for doing that i think that's something that uh most if not all manufacturers should adopt love the traction pads so again from a rigability standpoint this thing leaves nothing to be desired it's ready to go so the next category is the a in scrape which is affordability now this boat is at the upper end of the kayak fishing price spectrum uh coming in at over a little over four thousand uh, dollars and then you still have to add a battery to it which i'll talk about in just a second um it's not a budget boat it's not a low price point boat but when you consider what you get the tracks are all included your storage is all included they've got a battery box it's already pre-wired it's already got the ports for routing your electronics the motor's already installed everything that you need uh, is already there they've got a hatch to access the inside of the boat at the front, the rudder's already installed, the rudder handles, the tracks in the back. It doesn't leave a lot that you need. In fact, I think so far, this might be the only fishing kayak that I feel like I could take out of the plastic and everything that the manufacturer sent with it is all I need other than a paddle and a PFD to go fishing. And so again, you know, big shout out to the folks at Old Town for that. I do wish that the forward hatch was a little bit bigger, but I do realize that there are certain compromises you have to make, and that forward hatch is big enough for everything that you need it for. Um, uh, Performance-wise, so again, back to the affordability thing before I move on. Um, for what it is, the fact that the motor's already built in, it's already plug and play. By the time you go out and buy a motor, all the stuff you need to rig it and a fishing kayak, you're gonna come around the same price anyway. So from that standpoint, I think it's right there uh performance okay this boat is designed to be motorized so therefore the performance should be measured off of it being motorized and it doesn't really leave anything to desire to be desired there there's plenty of stability the motor never makes you feel like you're going to get thrown out of the boat um, it is a little bit on the slower side which i'll talk about in the um the pros and cons at the end but other than that from a performance standpoint it hits every parameter that I need and I, it hits every parameter that I think it should. So there doesn't need to be any uh, real improvements in performance. I think the boat is as fast as it should be for what it is. Uh, the motor power to ratio of the boat weight, everything about it is set up really well. So from a performance standpoint, I think they crushed it. Now, the everything else, um, transportability. You're probably gonna need a trailer for this thing or you're gonna need to throw it in the back of your truck. I wouldn't be car topping this thing. Unless you are like Hercules, you got one of those like load assist things, which by the way, I would check the ratings on your load assist thing. This thing is heavy, okay? Um, you know, when we get into the cons, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but the everything else is that you don't need a lot. You don't need much other stuff for this boat. You might want a cart. Uh, the Malone cart works really well with this boat. Um, there's just not a lot of everything else to consider other than the fact that it's heavy, okay? Um, pretty much everything you need comes with the boat. You don't need a lot of other considerations. Uh, from a storage standpoint, I would definitely uh, take care of the wiring. I would definitely manage the battery. And other than that, there's not a lot to talk about in the everything else category. They've pretty much taken care of everything that you need. All right, so let's jump into the pros and cons of the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 120 fishing kayak. Uh, pros right out of the gate, stability right there where I need it to be. Comfort right there where I need it to be. Rigability, probably best in class in the fishing kayak uh, market for initial outfitting. It's got everything you need. You can literally take this thing off the showroom floor or if you get it shipped to your house, you can take it out of the package and everything you need comes with the boat. So from a rigability standpoint, it's spot on. Performance is great. I think it's right there where it needs to be. What's funny is I'm gonna talk about performance in the pros category and in the cons category. In the pros category, it handles well. 
I love the fact that even though you can control the motor and you can change it and you can use the remote to accomplish that, you can also set the motor on a low setting and you can ease along and use the foot controls with that oversized rudder and steer the boat and you have a lot of control. So from a performance standpoint, I was super happy with this boat. All right guys, so let me tell you about another really smart feature uh, that the folks from Old Town integrated into this boat design. Anytime you sell a fishing kayak that has a motor included in it, uh, it's mandatory that you include a dead man switch. And you guys, if you make your boat motorized, you should make sure that you have a dead man switch one way or the other, even if you have to build it yourself. But this dead man switch is incorporated into a great place, makes it easy to connect to your PFD. Super smart design too that they made this line adjustable to where if you want to keep it connected to your hip pocket, your PFD when you're standing up. Uh, standing up is where you're most likely to fall down. This is one of the real advantages of this boat is you can steer it with the remote while you're standing. But you do want to have this dead man switch connected should you fall out of the boat. You don't want this thing to either run you over or you know run away from you where you can't catch it. What's cool about this thing is, is it pops off nice and easy. Uh, but the really smart thing about this design is they made the dead man switch double as your prop wrench where you come in here and you use that to take off and put on your uh, keyway that holds your prop wrench on. It comes with a spare in the box that they include. It also comes with a spare shear pin. So having a prop wrench built in so you don't have to carry an extra one uh, that doubles as your keel switch just super clever design. I love the way they protected it so you don't inadvertently break it. And I like how it's like right by your hip so it's easy to use. And I also like how they put it on the opposite side of the boat where your controls are so you don't have multiple things in one place. Again, another really clever, you know, incorporation of a safety feature and another smart design by separating them and not co-locating them with other controls where it makes things, you know, get in each other's way. Uh, so again, the dead man switch, that doubles as a prop wrench. Super smart, uh, clever design by the folks from Old Town. Um, other than that, I'm gonna jump in now to some cons and then stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm gonna throw a little things on my wish list that aren't necessarily a pro or a con. All right, so the real cons to this boat are affordability. Again, I talked about that a little bit earlier, but I think it's a, a good value for what you get, but it is at the upper end of the affordability spectrum. It's an expensive boat. Uh, it's not something that everybody can get. The great thing about the way Old Town distributes their boats is they are available at some of your big box stores, you know, like Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, and some of those other stores. And a lot of your specialty stores will also allow you to finance these boats. So it's one of those things where you can get past that initial sticker shock and get into a great fishing kayak and not pay as much for it up front. Uh, that's a decision you have to make. But from the standpoint of cons, probably the biggest one uh, would be affordability. Now, right behind affordability for me as a con, and I did praise this boat on its performance, but if I was going to be critical, I would say one of the things is it's not that fast, okay? I topped out somewhere in the four, uh, 4.2 mile per hour range, uh, but again, you got to remember that this boat is uh, outfitted with a 45 foot-pound Minn Kota trolling motor that has been adopted for kayak fishing it is not a uh, outboard electric motor like some of the other motors on the market so when you consider that it is a trolling motor it's pretty good speed for a trolling motor but again if you're looking for hole shot to get to that spot first uh, when fishing in a kayak tournament uh, you're going to either need to bump up to a more powerful boat or you can add a stern motor to this boat to get you where you're going uh, but again, most tournaments, including kayak bass fishing, uh, which I run, um, doesn't allow two motors. So that's one of the things that you have to take into account. If you're just looking to hold position, the spot lock is amazing. The spot lock is amazing. I'm going to say it one more time. The spot lock is amazing. Um, you know, I am a big fan of anchoring. I love the Anchor Wizard. Uh, you know, in fact, in my ultimate guide to you know, getting started kayak fishing. I talk about always anchoring. The great thing about this boat is the anchors right here. I would love to add a power pole to this boat and I probably will down the road. But as you can see on the boat, the way that I've been fishing it, I don't have an anchor wizard or a power pole because most of that is taken care of uh, right here. And so on my wish list, which we'll jump into now, um, I wish that the boat came rigged with wiring for nav lights because if I'm going to use a motorized fishing kayak I want to put nav lights on it and it's not something that I want to have to do myself but when you really think about it and you know the industry 
and you understand how manufacturing works, for everything they do at the manufacturer's level, it adds triple that or more cost by the time it makes it to you at retail. So because they have access right here to the hatch and they've got this big flat areas on the side, it will be really easy to tie your nav light wiring in right here to your plug and you're not gonna have that big of an issue. Uh, put a switch in the cockpit somewhere if you want to, to turn it on and off. But again, the motor and then having the nav lights right there would be sweet, but I do understand that compromises have to be made and they probably needed to keep this boat as affordable as they possibly could, considering that it had already creeped up to the top end. The next thing on my wish list is, I really wish it came with a little bit higher rated uh, connector. I personally haven't had any issues with this connector, uh, but like I talked about earlier in the video, I did have a couple of uh, places that I found on the internet where people talked about the connector. Here's what happens with these connectors. If you're not diligent about maintaining them with some type of corrosion prevention, I'm a big fan of putting dielectric grease on them about every six months and also throwing a little Corrosion X uh, or something like that on there. Um, you know, in between that, about every two, three weeks or after every major immersion, if you could. Uh, but when you allow, allow these things to corrode or um, oxidize, then it's gonna lower the rating. This connector is rated at 50 amps uh, and this motor is rated to draw in the high 40s. So again, I do wish that they would upgrade the connector a little bit so you had a bigger window. So if you don't take care of it as well, that you're not pushing the, the envelope on what that connector will hold but the wiring is adequate, the connector is adequate, and I just think that if you maintain it and you do your part as an angler, uh, as a consumer, you're not gonna have any issues, but I did wanna point that out. If you don't take care of it, you could run into the issue where you could smoke check that connector. Now, one great thing that the folks at Old Town have done is they have made it really easy to plug and play, replace that connector, and they have a connector replacement kit that you can buy directly from them. So kudos to them for identifying that, and hopefully that is leading down the road to putting an upgraded connector on the boat at some point um, in the future. Again, totally adequate. Uh, doesn't leave anything that you need. I just feel like you should have a little bit bigger cushion between the top end of your performance and your, your, your current draw from your motor and what your connectors are rated at. Um, I outfit this boat with either two batteries. I either outfit it with the Dakota Lithium um, 60 or the 100, and I'm hoping to get a 135 down the road when they become a little bit more available. Uh, I think the 60 is adequate. The 60 will get you a really good day of fishing, but if you're going to push the envelope, if you're gonna run hard all day, if you're gonna hold in current, if you're gonna run up current or into the wind, uh, then I definitely suggest you know, adding that 100 amp hour or bigger. You can definitely get away with a lead acid battery uh, early on, but you're gonna end up wanting to get a lithium battery to keep the weight down and to increase the performance at some point. So my recommendation is the Dakota Lithium um, 60 amp hour, and this is a great backup battery for your electronics, uh, but it's going to get you that, that full day of fishing unless you're just super hardcore or running the motor hard all day or fishing, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours, uh, in which case you might want that 100 amp hour, which is what I have this boat outfitted with. Now, the great thing about this boat, it's got plenty of room. You could actually take a backup battery and put it in the back and then put one um, underneath the seat. And man, this is just a great platform. You know, I, I, I could stand here all day and talk about the little things, but my recommendation would be to visit an old town dealer give this boat a try always do the try before you buy when you can get it on an internet form and find some angler that can let you demo it uh, if you're down here in north alabama hit me up i'll gladly take this thing to the water uh, and let you give it a, you know take it for a spin all right guys so i'm going to finish this video up with one last um wish list maybe even con you guys decide what category it goes in but you know i want you guys to come in here a little bit closer i'm speaking directly to you old town uh, you know i need you to do me a favor okay Old Town, hear me out on this. This boat is called the Sportsman. If it's called the Sportsman, it needs to come in camo. And I mean real camo, not, you know, orange camo and blue camo. I think those are great, and, but, but you gotta come in real earth tone camo if you're gonna call the thing the Sportsman series. Because not only is this boat a great platform for fishing, but if it came in camo, it'd be a great platform for duck hunting, turkey hunting, sneaking up on all of those other critters that we like to, uh, yeah, the ones that we like to harass and put in the freezer. So, Old Town, do me a favor. You wanna take this thing to the next level? You wanna make this boat perfecter? 
make it available in camo, like brown, green, black, gray camo, like real, you know, my favorite color, camo. I'll see you guys in the next video.